Good afternoon. I would like to take a moment before we begin to thank each and every one of you for joining me here and taking time out of your busy schedules. Has there ever been a moment in time where you've been preparing to speak to a large group of people where your knees became weak, you started to sweat profusely, and your heart felt like it was going to pound out of its chest? Ladies and gentlemen, this is anxiety. Mark Twain once famously said, there are only two types of speakers in the world, the nervous and the liars. My name is Larry Thomas. I'm a nursing student at the University of Wisconsin in Manitowoc who has an interest in anxiety. I am currently the lead researcher on a science experiment through the university that is utilizing biofeedback techniques to treat those who are suffering from anxiety at the academic level. I would like to take time today to discuss with you the background of anxiety, the physiologic changes within the body during an anxiety attack, the oral medications used to manage anxiety, and the biofeedback techniques that are currently being used to treat anxiety. Let's start with the background of anxiety. As you can see by the slide, anxiety does not discriminate anyone against anybody individually. All of us have moments of anxiousness in our lifetime. However, those who go unnoticed or untreated for any prolonged period of time will suffer from the mental disorder called anxiety. According to research on the Anxiety and Depression Association of America in 2016, approximately 6.8 million people in the United States suffered from the mental disorder anxiety. It's about one in 45. And according to Dr. Bott, in a research article from Medscape.com named Anxiety Disorder, it was most commonly found in the youth of teenagers and young adults who were in high school and college level academics. Furthermore, it affect, anxiety affects more females than males in a ratio of about one and a half or two to one. Even more, Things that we do on a daily basis can affect how exacerbated our anxieties can become. Things such as tobacco, alcohol, and coffee, which are all legal, can exacerbate our anxiety attacks. Beyond that, even illegal drugs such as opiates, heroin, and cocaine can exponentially make anxiety attacks worse than they are on a normal basis. Let's see what's happening inside of our bodies during times of anxiety. As you can see, our body does multiple things through times of anxiety. The most important control system within our anxiety is our brain. It is in control of something called the autonomic nervous system, which is our automatic response to different types of anxiety. Smoke alarms within our body are kind of the precursor to anxiety. We all have smoke alarms. But throughout times of prolonged exposure to these smoke alarms, it can become problems for anxiety. Long-term anxiety causes brain atrophy. And according to a study that was done on rats by a Dr. Mohammed in 2011, prolonged exposure to anxiety releases a chemical cord called cortisol, which actually led to shrinking of their brain and even death of brain cells. Prolonged exposure to anxiety can also, be, can also cause social anxiety, social problems, difficulty with interacting within society, and sometimes suicide. In addition to what's happening within our brains, the brain can function other organs within our systems that can cause reactions throughout our entire body. Certain reactions that take place in our body are prolific sweating, stomach aches, change in body temperature, excessive thirst, body trembles, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, just to name a few. Our brain works on nerve systems called the parasympathetic and sympathetic, which will affect multiple different organs in a different manner. Some of them create problems, such as the fight or flight syndrome, which most of us are familiar with. However, it is chemical releases from our kidneys that are called dopamine and ephedrine, that actually causes fight or flight. It is these types of symptoms that cause us to look panicked on the surface. Now that we know what our bodies can do, 
Let's see what type of medications can be used to control some of these symptoms. There are three main types of oral medications currently being used in America to manage anxiety. The first, as you can see, are called SSRIs. These are called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These are medications that block certain transmissions of chemicals within our brain and allow them to be absorbed through our bodies to give us some more relaxed and calm feeling that don't get reabsorbed in the brain. Zoloft and Lexapro are common medications currently being used to treat this. The second set are anxiolytics or sedatives, commonly known as Xanax or Lithium. These medications are medications that are also known as benzodiazepines or benzos. These give the body a complete sense of relaxation. Although these can be great for anxiety, it can also limit our abilities to function on a daily basis because they make us less aware of our surroundings. Finally, as you can see, antidepressants are a common treatment for anxiety. Effexor and Prozac are two of these certain medications. Antidepressants are used to block, very similar to SSRIs, certain chemicals in our brain that can be reabsorbed in our body to give us more of a happiness sensation within our bodies that allows serotonin, which is a brain chemical, to be reabsorbed elsewhere in the body to give us a more um, effective manner of dealing with anxieties. Although these three medications are great, they can really only be used in patients who have insurance because these are costly treatments in the public eye. Now that we have some form of understanding of oral medications, let's transition to a new and kind of up and coming treatment that's known as biofeedback. Biofeedback was originated back in the 1970s. <clears throat> it is a, tr a treatment mechanism that utilizes our internal symptoms that can be monitored on monitors externally that the patient gets to watch and can react to them. For instance, as our blood pressure rises, the patient is taught how to react to see if they can't control how their blood pressure responds. It was a fringe therapy up until about the 1990s. It was more or less used intermittently and never really gained popularity until that time when it was known to show improved academic and athletic performance that was supported by numerous medical providers in the 1990s. It is a technique that is learned through multiple different techniques. Most commonly are the four S's and diaphragmatic breathing, which is where you kind of focus on the here and now, take nice, slow, deep breaths through your nostrils, and force air out slowly through puckered lips like this. This helps learn how to relax. It helps improve relaxation throughout all and sort of helps you focus on the task that's at hand. It also gives you an improved overall sense of self. It helps you focus on really what is important and tries to shut down the brain's automatic responses through self-control. Now that we kind of have an understanding about all of the different treatment options available, let's kind of conclude everything and do a summarization of what we can do for anxiety. Remember that anxiety can affect everyone, but it's tremendously important that we treat it on an individual basis because one treatment may not work for everybody. You can treat it through medication or biofeedback techniques. Anxiety does not make you weak, nor does any other mental illness. However, it is tremendously important to seek medical advice if you do feel you are suffering from any form of mental illness. And most importantly, we should all learn to relax. Anxiety affects all of us, but just remember we can all learn to cope with anxiety through multiple different treatment options. I appreciate all of your time, and I hope you've learned something by going through the backgrounds of anxiety, the physiologic changes of anxiety, the treatment options through oral medications, and biofeedback today. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking to you down the road.